I'm now going to explain some details of how to get the most out of the EMCCD Ixon camera. So you will be using this camera whenever you are in a channel that comes from a family of settings that has Ixon in it, so either the CF40, the CF25 Ixon, or when you're using a dual camera configuration. Uh, this camera overall has very high sensitivity, uh, but it has a larger pixel size than the Xyla. So it is not the best choice if you're looking for the highest possible resolution. It is an excellent choice if you are looking for the highest possible sensitivity. And sensitivity is also connected with speed. So um, if you need to go fast, your exposures need to be short. If with short exposures on the Xyla, you can't get the um, necessary signal to noise, the EMCCD is a good choice. So how do you actually uh, make the most of the EMCCD? Um, so just like the Xyla, the parameters that you can adjust are the exposure time and the laser power in the channel, but there's now this other parameter called EM gain. So this EM gain um, refers to a gain on the electronics that reduce something on the camera called the read noise. And so you need to be um, careful in how you use this. So I have here a sample uh, kindly provided by the Bear Lab where some um, cytoskeletal, pretty dim proteins are labeled with GFP. Um, and I just want to show them as an example of how you use the EM gain uh, to get better images. So if we go to live, we currently have the EM gain set to 5, and the exposure to 250, the laser at 2. You can see, well, actually, you can see that we can't see anything. So if you're in a situation like this, what you should do is uh, start doubling the EM gain and seeing how the image changed. So you can see already going from five to 10, we have a significant improvement. And if you go to active channel here on the live, uh, that will allow you to change the M gain while you're uh, looking at this channel. So if we go to live, you'll see that already looks better than five. So again, this was five, this is 10. If we double it to 20, you can already see a dramatic improvement. If you go to 40, gets even better. If you go to 80, it gets a little better. 160, really there's not too much of a difference. And if we go to 300, which is the maximum, you really don't see much of a difference. So what you should do uh, is use the highest, um, rather the lowest EM gain up at which there is still an improvement. So you can see between 40 which is this, and 80, there is still a noticeable improvement, which you can see as the contrast between these things, which are the real signal and the background. But if we go from 80 to 160, we no longer see that much of an improvement. So there's no point in increasing the EM gain beyond 80. So the reason that you don't want to increase the EM gain beyond what you need based on this sort of uh, contrast evaluation method is that when you increase the EM gain, you reduce the dynamic range. Um, so you make all your signals higher, so some of them may saturate and you won't be able to fit both really bright things and really dim things in your data set. So, so there's value to not pushing this beyond what you need. Uh, one important point is that when you're making these evaluations of um, whether the signal to noise is improving or not, you're comparing the contrast of objects that you have some idea that might be real, like all these things here, with background. So, you know, the noise essentially where there's nothing. And you want to do this with the auto contrast on so that the, the, the software is constantly trying to adjust the contrast to make it look good. And it becomes very obvious when you use it under those circumstances when a signal to noise is terrible and how it starts improving as you increase the dynamic range. Okay, and it's the reason I'm going in factors of two or approximately factors of two, it's very easy to see if there's an improvement when you move something by a factor of two as opposed to moving it by a small percentage where it's much harder to see whether anything relevant happened. Okay, I'm gonna go back to 80, which is what we found had good results. Um, there is one uh, other commonly used parameter um, in the MCCD uh, or rather I should say it's, it's a parameter you can use, maybe it's not so common, uh, and that one lives here under this star feature, and it's the horizontal shift speed. 
by default, this will be set to 30 megahertz and 16 bit. Uh, that is optimized for speed, but if you switch it to 10 megahertz, 16 bit, uh, that will result in an image with higher signal to noise. If you've already got a high enough EM gain, the difference between 10 megahertz and 30 megahertz will not be very large. But if you don't have enough EM gain, or even at 300, you can't quite get uh, a good signal, this can make a difference. The cost is that this, uh, when the camera operates in this mode, it takes longer to read out the images. Images, So there's a longer dead time uh, just to get the data off the camera between images. So you go more slowly. If you're looking at things where speed is not a major consideration, you might want to consider where they're doing this. Uh, is a worthwhile um, a change. So for example, here we were at 30, now we're at 10. You can see there's a little bit of improvement. Where this becomes most noticeable though is when you're in a situation um, where maybe you didn't have enough EM gain. So this is the version at 10 megahertz with an EM gain of 20. And look at the version with 30 megahertz. So it's noticeably um, more noisy. Now, the reason our default is 30 megahertz is that, again, when you have the EM gain high enough, so in this case, that'd be 80 or 160, where the signal to noise is good, uh, and those circumstances, switching from 30 megahertz to 10 megahertz has a small effect. It's about a 30% increase in signal to noise. So it's often not worth it if what you want is speed. But that is formally a parameter which you can use and can help boost your signal to noise a little bit. So again, the two things that you're mostly going to do, uh, excuse me, the, the thing that you're mostly going to do is the EM gain, but there is that other parameter which lives here, which can give you a slightly, uh, a small additional boost.